My collection has changed a lot over the last few years, and in this new series, we're going to take a look at my entire collection one section at a time, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at my huge Nintendo Wii collection. So what is the point of this video? The point of this video is not for me to show off my collection. The point of this video is for me to show you a lot of awesome games on the Nintendo Wii, recommend some hidden gems and other game recommendations that I think you should play. And in this video, I want to do something special because a lot of these games I've never played in my life. I want you guys, as you see the games that we're going to show in today's video, I want you guys to let me know in the comments which of these games that I haven't played should I play sooner rather than later. So keep a close eye out on the games that I show and if you see any that you would highly recommend that I play, let me know that in the comments. So what is my background with the Nintendo Wii? Well, I first learned about the Nintendo Wii through the Nintendo Power Magazine. That's right, back when you didn't get a lot of your news from the internet, you had to get that monthly magazine to get your video game news. And I remember seeing the article, the first major article about the Nintendo Wii in Nintendo Power, and it absolutely blew my mind because at that time, motion controls were something that were mostly unheard of in the gaming community and coming hot off the GameCube and being a huge, huge fan of the GameCube at that time, I was ready and super excited for Nintendo's next console. I remember getting a Nintendo Wii for Christmas, the year it came out, and I fell in love with the Nintendo Wii. Let's get into a few quick numbers about the Nintendo Wii collection. I have approximately 270 games in my Nintendo Wii collection and that's broken down as follows. 244 games in my Nintendo Wii collection are complete in box. That's 90.4% of the collection being complete in box, which is pretty freaking awesome. I have 25 games with no manual. I have one that's case and manual only being Animal Crossing City Folk, oddly enough, so I need to get the disc for that one. And then I have one game that is factory sealed, which is a boy and his blob. The estimated value of my entire Nintendo Wii collection is $3,238 at the time of this recording and that is simply based off price charting prices so it's probably worth a little bit more than that when you go off eBay and retail. Before we go over the five most expensive games in my Nintendo Wii collection, I want to tell you guys about the awesome sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. So what is a VPN aka Virtual Private Network? When your data is online in an unencrypted form, it can be stolen and used by malicious entities to do you harm. A VPN creates encryption and security between your device and the internet to keep your data safe from prying eyes. I have used ExpressVPN in the past and started using it again for a variety of reasons. I use it for security to help prevent hackers from stealing my info. I use it for privacy to keep my internet service provider from seeing my internet activity and selling my data to other companies. And I'm going to soon start using it to access content that is typically restricted due to the part of the world that I am in, which will open me up to more content on various streaming platforms like Netflix. In addition to all that, ExpressVPN offers the fastest speeds, 24 seven customer support, a single button press to activate, making it easy to use, and VPN servers that cannot store customer logs. ExpressVPN is a top rated VPN provider and if you are interested in trying ExpressVPN, use my link in the video description below to get your first three months for free with a discounted 12 month subscription. All right, we're going to talk about the five most expensive games in my Nintendo Wii collection. We're going to start from the least expensive of the five to the most expensive of the five. And keep in mind, these numbers are coming from PriceCharting.com at the time of this recording. So the value of these games could be up or down depending on when you are watching today's video. Both Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo and Mario Party 9 are coming in at around $50 complete in box. New Play Control Pikmin is coming in at around $53 complete in box. Silent Hill Shattered Memories is coming in at around $82 complete in box. And the collector's edition of Metroid Prime Trilogy in the Steelbook is coming in at around $127 dollars complete and i'm actually missing the slip cover for this one unfortunately okay the time you have all been waiting for we are going to talk about all of the games in the nintendo wii collection but because of the insane number of games in my wii collection 270 games we're going to split this into several different categories first i'm going to talk about all of the games that i have played in my collection 
Then I'm going to talk about the games that I haven't played in my collection, but I want to play in the very near future. Then I'm going to quickly talk about the games that I'm interested in playing, but not anytime soon. And then we're going to end with a small stack of games that I'm probably never going to play. Why would I have a stack of games in my Wii collection that I'm never going to play, you might ask? Well, I shouldn't say never, because I could play them one day for a video. You never know. I'm going to announce it right here, right now. So to those of you watching this video, that I am going to be going for a complete in box North American Nintendo Wii collection. I'm going to try to get every single Wii game that was released in North America, but I'm not going to really start working on that until I complete the GameCube collection, because that is priority number one. All right, so again, we're gonna start by talking about the games in my Wii collection that I actually have played, so let's go. Red Steel and Red Steel 2. You know what, I actually like the first Red Steel. It's a pretty decent and fun first person shooter if you can get used to the janky motion controls. Red Steel 2, however, is one of my favorite games on the Wii. It is fantastic. It utilizes the Wii Motion Plus to a degree that you don't see in very many Wii games, and it is, I would consider it a hidden gem. I highly recommend anybody with a Wii get that game. Four of the best light gun games on the Nintendo Wii, the two House of the Dead games and the two Resident Evil light gun games, Metroid Prime 3 and the Metroid Prime Trilogy. Metroid Prime series is one of my favorite game series of all time, and the Wii versions on the trilogy are some of the best ways to play the Metroid Prime games. Well, except the first one, the remastered version on the Switch is the best way to play the first one. But if you have a Wii, grab the trilogy because you will be in for a treat. Mario Party 8 and 9, the Wii Mario Party games I thought were pretty fun. I know they're not everybody's favorites, but I really enjoy both of them and I enjoy some of the motion controlled mini games. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword two phenomenal 3D Zelda games, especially Skyward Sword. It gets hate and I don't understand why because prior to Breath of the Wild, it was actually one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. Super Mario All-Stars on the Wii, fantastic compilation of some classic Mario games and you get this cool little history and soundtrack extra with it. Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 are two of the finest 3D platformers ever crafted in my opinion, especially Super Mario Galaxy 2 masterpiece games that every Wii owner should own. Dragon Ball Revenge of King Piccolo. This is definitely a hidden gem. This game is an absolute blast. It plays through pretty much the entire Dragon Ball series. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, or even if you're not, this is a game I highly recommend. Monkey King and Saint from UFO. These are two shoot 'em up games. They play sort of similar to each other, and they're okay. They're not bad. I mean, if you're a fan of shoot 'em ups you can still get these games for pretty cheap. The original Day Blob, I haven't put a lot of time into this game, but what I did play, I really enjoyed. It's a unique take on a 3D platformer. Monster Lab, this is a total hidden gem. You construct monsters in this game, and you make them go against each other and fight each other as you explore the world and it's just a surprisingly fun game. I highly recommend checking out. It's got a unique battle system too. We play Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. Come on, these are three must have titles in any Wii library. These three games are full of a lot of fun, smaller experiences that utilize the motion controls very well. WarioWare Smooth Moves, absolute blast of a WarioWare game on the Wii, utilizing the motion controls in that frantic micro game setting. The Wii edition of Resident Evil 4 was my favorite way to play Resident Evil 4 before the VR version came out, but if you can't get your hands on the VR version and you have a Wii, you gotta get this version. Rayman Origins, just a fantastically crafted 2D platformer. Okami is the Wii port of the PS2 masterpiece. Highly recommend playing this game. No More Heroes is pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Um, I not played the second one. I think I'm going to enjoy the second one better, but the first one's all right. Now here is one of my favorite hidden gems on the Wii. It is an action adventure platforming game with a very dark aesthetic and some really unique gameplay. This is a interesting game. It's sort of a, a, a mini game, party game style game, but you can play it with up to two people. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. You're actually doing jobs 
but in kind of a mini game format. Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock is by far my favorite Guitar Hero game. Generator Rex, I'm not familiar with the show, but the Wii game is kind of a little hidden gem. It's pretty fun. Donkey Kong Country Returns, one of the best 2D platformers ever made from Retro Studios, the same developer of the Metroid Prime series. So although I don't have the disc for this copy, I used to have this game in my original Wii collection and I was horribly addicted to it. Far Cry Vengeance, I remember playing this when I originally had the Wii and although I don't remember a whole lot about it, I do remember sort of enjoying it. So I need to revisit this one day. Pirates Plundar is a hidden gem. It is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, very similar to Castle Crashers, but pirate themed, and you can play it with up to four players. Highly recommend it. Zack and Wiki on the Wii. This is one of the best puzzle games on the Wii. If you like puzzles and you like point and click style gameplay, you are going to absolutely love this game and it is quite challenging. The Secret Saturday's Beast of the Fifth Sun. I don't really know anything about this show, but this game is actually sort of fun, kind of borderline hidden gem territory, so check it out. Wild Earth African Safari, sort of a hidden gem. The best way I know how to describe this game is that it's like Pokemon Snap but on an African safari. Wario Land Shake It, just a fantastic 2D platformer, very underappreciated, almost hidden gem status. Vertigo is a hidden gem game that plays very similar to Super Monkey Ball, except with more realistic graphics. Super Smash Bros Brawl, you guys know all about this game. Amazing Smash Bros game. Super Paper Mario, the sort of outcast of the Paper Mario series because it's the only one that's not a turn-based RPG. It's more of a action adventure puzzle game and it is phenomenal. New Super Mario Bros Wii, you guys don't need me to tell you about this one. One of the most well-known Wii games, awesome game. Muramasa the Demon Blade, this is a hidden gem, absolutely beautiful game, 2D action adventure game, and it is extremely fun and challenging. Mercury Meltdown Revolution, this is a physics puzzle game, sort of similar to like a Super Monkey Ball, but more puzzle themed, and it is quite difficult, but really fun. Mario Kart Wii, fantastic entry into Mario Kart series. Manhunt 2 is an absolutely brutal and controversial game, but the Wii version is surprisingly fun. Kirby's Epic Yarn. This is a fun Kirby game. It's very easy, but it has a very unique and visually striking art style, and you can play through the entire game cooperatively. All right, now we're going to talk about the Wii games that I haven't played yet, but I really want to play and I'm going to play in the near to immediate future. Now, I've got these broken up into several different categories just because of the sheer amount of games here that I really want to play. So we're going to try to go through these as quickly as I can, but I might have a little bit to say about a few games here and there. So let's go. After my awesome experience with SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, I'm always down to try a SpongeBob game, especially if it's a 3D platformer. So I've got three of them here on the Wii that I definitely want to play at some point. There are three Cabela games that I have on the Wii in my collection. I'm very intrigued by all three of these, especially Cabela's Survival and Dangerous Hunts 2011. There are quite a few Rabbids games on the Wii and I have four of them here and I'm very intrigued by all of them, especially Ra Raving Rabbids Travel in Time and Rabbids Go Home because I've heard that those are two hidden gem games that everybody should play. So I'm gonna check those out very soon. I have a nice little stack of Sonic games here for the Wii that I'm very intrigued to try out. Now I've heard some bad things about a couple of these, but the one that I want to try out the most that I've heard is actually a decent Sonic game is Sonic Colors. We've got a few sort of survival horror games here. I've always been intrigued to play all three of these and I've heard that these are all three pretty good. We got Cursed Mountain, Along in the Dark, and Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Got a little stack of non-Lego Star Wars games that I need to play. Uh, I've heard good things about, well, most of these. We got some sort of Mario sports games here on the Wii that I've never played. So we got Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, Mario Super Sluggers, which is a Mario baseball game that I've never played, uh, Mario Strikers Charged, Mario Sports Mixed, and then two different versions of Mario Power Tennis. The new Play Control one is probably the one that I want to check out. We've got some 2D games here that uh, some of these look pretty good. So the three at the top are the ones that I'm most intrigued to try. Metal Slug Anthology, Batman the Brave and the Bold, and Astro Boy. I've heard fantastic things about all three of those games. The other four on the bottom, Ocean Commander, Phineas and Ferb, This Santa Claus Game, and George of the Jungle. 
Uh, I've heard Ocean Commander is good. I've heard Phineas and Ferb might be a hidden gem. The two at the bottom are probably going to suck, but I still want to try them out. And I have a huge stack of Lego games here. We got Lego Batman, Lego Batman 2, Lego Star Wars, The Complete Saga, Lego Star Wars 3, Lego Pirates of the Caribbean, Lego Indiana Jones 1 and 2, and two of the Lego Harry Potter games. I believe it covers all of the years. Uh, and I like Lego games. So we got a series of first person shooters here. I've always wanted to try out the Call of Duty games on the Wii, of which I have four of them, and I've always wanted to try out the Medal of Honor games on the Wii, of which I have two. Uh, I have the Conduit, which I've heard is a hidden gem first-person shooter, and I believe there's also a second one. I need to snag that one. Then we got Go GoldenEye 007, which I believe is a remake for the Wii. We got 007 Quantum of Solace, and then we've got this Nerf Instrike game, and I've actually heard that these Nerf games, uh, one or two of them are sort of hidden gem first-person shooters, so I need to check that out as well. We got some other sort of miscellaneous sports-ish games, sort of arcade sports games. Uh, we got Punch Out on the Wii, which I've never played and I've heard is great, ready to rumble. I've heard that the Tiger Woods games on the Wii are fantastic. Uh, we got one very odd looking golf game called King of Clubs. We've got a couple of bowling games, one of which I'm very intrigued by because it's like an alien themed bowling game. Here we have a stack of puzzle games. The five at the top are the ones I'm most intrigued by being a boy in his blob, Fling Smash, looks like Geon Cube, I think that one's called. Uh, Flips Twisted Towers, Flips Twisted World, Rugu Twisted Towers, very intrigued by those. And then the three at the bottom, I also want to check out Neopets Puzzle Adventure and then both of the Boom Blocks games. I got a couple of stacks of racing games that I want to try out. Let's start with this one. We've got Excite Truck, Excite Bots Trick Racing, Mini Desktop Racing, Cruising, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, Rig Racer 2, which looks like an arcade style racing game with 18 wheelers, Speed Racer, which I've heard is a fantastic hidden gem. And we got a Madagascar kart racing game and then we've got a freaking nascar kart racing game which is something that i was shocked even exists nitro bike i've heard is good need for speed nitro i've heard is good nascar unleashed looks like a arcade nascar racing game then we got a couple of monster 4x4 games that look fun and some kind of weird obscure looking heathcliff racing game and we've got some obscure looking light gun games or target shooting games we got this pheasants game ghost squad which i've heard is good spy games elevator mission heavy fire afghanistan i've heard that one's good arcade shooting gallery chicken blaster and then we got matthew's bow hunting attack of the movies 3d top shark arcade reload which looks like a fun one and remington super slam hunting north america which is a mouthful next up we got four different stacks of games that i'm sort of lumping into like a third person action adventure platformer category kind of lumping all these together so just kind of third person style game so let's run through these real quick we've got driver san francisco epic mickey which i've been very intrigued by dead rising chop till you drop which looks interesting deadly creatures i've heard is a hidden gem tomb raider underworld looks good captain america i've heard is sort of a hidden gem castlevania judgment mad world looks amazing and spider-man shattered dimensions i've heard is really good we got a couple of ben 10 games which i know nothing about ben 10 but i've heard a few of the games are actually pretty decent we've got this Army Men, Soldier of Misfortune, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you can't go wrong with that, The Island of Dr. Frankenstein, and Igor the game both look terrible, but hey, you never know. Death Junior Root of Evil looks like a really fun uh, action adventure game. The Ghostbusters game on the Wii looks great. Endless Ocean and Endless Ocean Blue World I've been very intrigued by. Destroy All Humans Big Willy Unleashed. The Zorro game looks interesting. The Godfather, No More Heroes 2, Desperate Struggle looks amazing. Ninja Bread Man, it's probably gonna suck, but you never know. I've heard Knights is really good. And then of course, Prince of Persia, Rival Swords. And the final stack in this category, we've got Tornado Outbreak, which honestly looks like, a, looks like it could be a hidden gem. Crash Mind Over Mutant, very intrigued by that because it's a crash game I've never played. Code Lyoko, Quest for Infinity looks interesting. Overlord looks awesome. The Blob 2 looks like a lot of fun. I love Battalion Wars, so I definitely want to try Battalion Wars 2 at some point. I've heard the Wii version of Bully is really good. We got the sequel to Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World. Tales of Symphonia was one of my favorite RPGs on the GameCube. Metroid Other M, I really want to play because people like to really crap on that game. But I've also had a lot of people tell me it's amazing. And in New Play Control, Pikmin looks like a very interesting way to play Pikmin. Now, this these last two stacks, these are sort of like some random miscellaneous games that I didn't really know how to categorize. Calvert Tucker's Redneck Jamboree got horrible reviews, but you know what? It looks like one of those games that might be so bad it's good, or at least 
get a good laugh out of it. CSI Fatal Conspiracy, I'm very intrigued by because I used to watch CSI back in the day. Worms Battle Islands, love the Worms series. Monopoly, always down to try Monopoly games. Marble Mania looks interesting. Heavenly Guardian looks interesting. Guitar Hero Aerosmith, I love Guitar Hero and I love Aerosmith, so you can't go wrong with that. Namco Museum Remix looks like a fun, remixed, redone compilation of some of the classic Namco games. Ninja Reflex looks like an interesting, sort of like uh, motion controlled mini game style game. Then we got the Munchables, which I've heard is a hidden gem. Mythmaker's Orbs of Doom looks like a Super Monkey Ball style game. I've heard great things about both of the Trauma Center games. Spore Hero looks interesting. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, I love the Super Monkey Ball series, so you can't go wrong with that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Smash Up, I've heard is really good. Blazing Angels looks like an interesting warplane flying style game. And then Army Rescue sort of looks like a Worms-like game. All right, now I'm gonna quickly tell you guys the games in my collection that I do wanna play at some point, but probably in the further future because they're not as much as a priority as the last games we talked about. North American Hunting Extravaganza, Off-Road Extreme Special Edition, Phantom Brave We Meet Again, Rapala Tournament Fishing, Poke Park 2 Wonders Beyond, Pinball Hall of Fame, WW2 Aces, Wii Ski, Transformers Prime The Game, and Toy Story 3. Battleship, Build and Race, Carnival Games Mini Golf, Carnival Games, City Builder, Lux or three, Space Camp, Thrillville Off the Rails, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Summer Sports Paradise Island. New Carnival Games, Power Rangers Samurai, Rampage Total Destruction, Monster Hunter Tri, NBA Jam, DECA Sports 1 and 2, Hysteria Hospital Emergency Ward, Iron Man 2, Monster Trucks Mayhem, Big League Sports, Triple Crown Championship Snowboarding, Twin Strike Operation Thunder, Wipe Out the Game, Cooking Mama Cook Off, Dawn of Discovery, Deadliest Catch, Family Party 30 Great Games, Family Game Night for the Game Show, ATV Quad Kings, Smarty Pants, The Sims 3, Tournament Legends, Ultimate Board Game Collection, Xenoblade Chronicles, Hasbro Family Game Night, Harvest Moon Animal Parade, Harry Potter and Order of the Phoenix, Green Lantern, The Golden Compass, Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, Final Fantasy Fables Chocobo's Dungeon, Game Party, Drawn to Life the Next Chapter, Emergency Heroes, The Garfield Show, Thread of the Space Lasagna, Kid Adventure Sky Captain, Kid Sports Crazy Golf, Avatar The Last Airbender, Legend of the Dragon. So let's end this on the Nintendo Wii games that I'm probably never going to play, but hey, you never know, I might pop them in one day. Backyard Sports Rookie Rush, Backyard Football, Barbie, Championship Foosball, Super Pickups, Disney Universe, Dora the Explorer, Crystal Kingdom, Jeopardy, Wii Music, Wii Fit, WWE Smackdown vs. Raw 2008, and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? That is it for today's collection update video on the Nintendo Wii collection. Remember, the biggest thing that I want out of this video is I want you guys to learn about some awesome games to add to your own Wii collection and play, but I want you to let me know in the comments what games did I show in today's video that I haven't played that you highly recommend I play. Also, feel free to recommend games that I don't yet have in my Nintendo Wii collection.